radio was invented by Marvin Audio. <laughs> it was silent until that phone call. <laughs> All right, we well, should be fine now. Hey, are we better now? We noticed it when you said it, but we don't. We only have a certain amount of things we can there do. Okay. We yep. So, what were you saying? What was your whole funny bit you wanted I to start out with? It was like a murder thing. It was very just, ugh. Boy, glad they didn't have to hear that. Yeah, I know. I'm embarrassed for having thought of it. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Jackbox Party Club. I'm Ryan. I'm Warren. Join Brooks on the I'm Wheels Brooke. of Steel. Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> no, talk no, over your introduction. Totally and we have a very special guest in a little bubble here, uh, Tim Sniffin. How are you, Tim? Ooh. I'm great, Ryan. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> the thing about Tim is he's always sort of being sarcastic. <laughs> but partially genuine. Right. Uh, and it's a lifetime of work to figure out which is which. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's honestly my main goal in life. Uh, Tim obviously has done. There's no behind the scenes role Tim hasn't done for Jackbox, I feel like. Writer, voice Join actor of many games, including Split the Room, which we're going to play first. Uh, artist on many, many games. Mm -hmm. Um, most recently, Dictionarium. Most recently, Art for Dictionarium, which yeah. was amazing. Uh, Tim, what? That's right. Those where, little angels carrying signs around. Join the party. My favorite. Where, yeah. My favorite part <laughs> about. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but my favorite part was. <laughs> so the thought is gone. The thought is gone. <laughs> yeah, this is. Time? Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is what it's like working with Tim. <laughs> Uh, Join us. I was just going to remark how much joy I got from uh, Luke, our project manager on that project, always being like, mm, shouldn't the devils have wings or something? And you're just being like, no, I'm not going to ever do it, Luke. I was going to do it, but not since you said it. It was even weirder and more specific. There are these little devils, and he wanted their feet to kick. Oh, yes. Well, I was like, why can't the feet kick? And I was like, why do you want that so bad? <laughs> yeah, there was a point. There was truly a point where I was like, why don't I just put it in to shut him up? And then he asked one more time. And I was like, now they're absolutely not doing that. <laughs> yeah, now it's never going to be that. Uh, uh, well, um, let's. we're going to talk a lot with Tim on the as the stream goes on. But let's get people into the game, and we can sort of talk as we go. Um, we're going to play Split the Room, and I think There's the code is going to go more. into the Discord first. Yes. Discord.gg slash Jackbox Games if you are not a member. Tim, have you ever seen the fan art for the Split the Room cat? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we were just playing some in this channel before the show started. It's incredible. Especially when it's kind of like sexy anime cat, which yes. is how I feel most days. <laughs> Have you seen? I'm sure you've seen the one that Spencer always has as his uh, background. Yeah, the, the, the thong. Like, deeply inappropriate one. Right, right, right. Uh, yes, I'm highly, highly enjoy that one. <laughs> um, all right. Looks like we're full. Hang yeah, on one up. second. Every single screen has split the Everything room. It's taken over the whole stream. <laughs> Uh, uh. No, nope. One minute. All right, we're going back to you guys. Hey. Um, if you didn't get into the main <laughs> game, you can join the audience by going to jackbox.tv, entering YSDY as the room code, and the audience can win split the room. That's right. So you have a good chance here. No. Nope. That's closer. Why? <laughs> Are you? Changing stuff within the um, super whatever super source, that whole thing. Uh, I you know more about it than me at this point, but if there's anything yeah, I can do to help. Yeah, but there is some some weirdness, admittedly, going on. <laughs> Let me know if you would like me to look at it. Other, I mean, I I fully believe in your capabilities, bro. Mm, that's sweet, Ryan. It is. I'm a sweet guy. Uh, Tim, what was your? When did you start with Jelly Vision? Jackbox and a Jelly Vision. So even before Jelly Vision, it was a company called Berkeley Systems. Yeah. And this was right after school. I was just kicking around Berkeley like so many wayward people do. <laughs> and I was hired as an animator. They were the people that, no one knows this anymore, but they made the screensaver with flying toasters. Mm -hmm. Back when people paid for screensavers, and so <laughs> they made like a ton of money off of people buying screensavers. And then someone there was friends with, with I think, uh, Harry Gottlieb, who created Jelly Vision. And together they made the first You Don't Know Jack. I did some animation for that. And then I always wanted to work for, I wanted to take classes at Second City. So I moved to Chicago to work with Jelly Vision. 
and have done stuff like on and off with them. So I, uh, you don't know Jack was my was my gateway drug into Jellyvision, which became Me. Jackbox. Do yeah, and then I've start. done uh, I, I worked on you don't know Jack two, you don't know Jack movies, um, and then like when we brought it back, you don't know Jack two thousand what was it called? Two thousand eleven or whatever. Yeah, I did segways for that, and then um, voiceover for some like you don't know Jack the commercials that used to play at the end of it. Um, which led to voiceover for Split the Realm. So I've just been like that creepy stalker that's always in the backyard whenever you're ready to invite them inside. You did all the, the um, number segues on the new You Don't Know Jack, too, which was really cool. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. And um, yeah. that was like, it's always so fun to work with Andy Poland, who does all the audio. Because, like, in the beginning, he'll be like, anything you have in mind? And often, like, he will take any suggestions, but also just run and do his own stuff. And I love getting each new thing from him, because then it was just, I would just animate to that. Yeah, totally. Um, that's cool. I actually didn't know you worked at Berkeley Systems. So you went from Berkeley, working on You Don't Know Jack as part of Berkeley, to then coming to Jellyvision and working on You Don't Know Jack as part of Jellyvision. And you know, Ryan, it was the dot-com bubble. Like, anything was possible. Well, we were, oh yeah, you know, I mean, but it really was like I I forget who my manager was, but I was just like, can I have my desk in Chicago and, and but just keep working on these things? And they were like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, yeah, it was one of those things you ask expecting them to be like, no, you absolutely can't do that, you child. And uh, yeah, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it really was. Things were just more possible back then. The smells were smellier, colors were brighter. Oh, just the food. Everything tasted better. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, sh I mean, should I comment if I see something in the? Yeah, feel free. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. I was I was trying to get my answer in, but yeah, let's let's hit the the chat for questions. Oh, there's so many things now that I've completely ignored. Uh, <laughs> Yuxi, who's a regular. I mean, tips for someone who wants to become an animator. Oh, well, I think it's it's so much easier these days to just put stuff online. So the great thing is it's not hard to get like uh, animation software that doesn't cost that much. Just start making things and putting them out there. Because the moment you get a job interview, they're gonna say, great, what do you have? And if you can have a link to something, that's gonna, no amount of awesome interviewing is gonna take the place of if you can send them a link to like, yeah, I did this 30 second, 45 second thing that's, you know, I'm really happy with, looks really cool. So just like start start making things, figuring out your own style and find somewhere to put it online. Do you think, I mean, as somebody who is both a writer and an artist, do you feel like there's an advantage in applying for an art job just because you could be like, no, here it is right here. You don't even have to spend the time of reading something. Look at this, it's great, right? I always felt like uh, compared to like uh, a writing submission where you're like, let me go and read what they did versus being like, oh yeah, that looks great. Yeah, I think writing is harder. Yeah. Because I think many, many people, like the hiring people suspect that they could be a good writer if they just put aside an hour, whereas Many, like, not as many people would be like, yeah, I could be an animator if I had an hour's free time. Yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah, there's, you know, there's that immediate tangible skill, whereas writing, I think, is more, like, subjective and pe everyone can do it. So it's it's definitely harder. Right. What was the question? Yeah, you got it. That was it. <laughs> um, yeah. People are asking if we're going to talk about the questions on the Discord. We have them copied on our notes. We'll get to those in the break, the Discord ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, somebody asked what your favorite old Jack commercial was. Oh, good split, by the way. Nice. Good split? Yeah. Good split, Red. Um, let's see. Favorite You Don't Know Jack commercial. Let me think. I mean, it's an unsurprising answer, but especially, like, the first time we heard Jockey. Uh, and it's just, and he's, like, so endearing and so obnoxious at the same time. It was just... However, so easy to picture this like, like cruel animated character just <laughs> like um, tormenting children. So that just brought me so much joy. And then there's one, there was a little while we were doing like animated commercials uh, during for Head Rush, yeah. which is, a, you know, from way back when. But yeah, there was a thing about a puppy farm <laughs> where the visual is they're just cramming these puppies into like this glass tube. <laughs> and it was so... It's very like Red and Stimpy style drawn, and it was so beautiful. I, 
I listened to that one a million times. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, for uh, like the very short intros before one of the You Don't Know Jacks, where we kind of animated things, but you know, there was like ten seconds of animation. I got to animate uh, Chalky, Chalky's allergy puffs. I think. Oh know. yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. allergy yeah. clusters or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> allergy clusters. Uh, it was a. It was a. High honor to get to have <laughs> Chalky. Yeah, that's and hilarious. Insight. One of the ones that you Every wrote for you the new Jack that I really like is the one that just starts. It's this. just this weird stream of consciousness story where it starts out like you on, you're on a boat or whatever. Like you get a letter, and it's just like, and you think it's gonna go one way, and it always just like changes like, to most the most abstract, ridiculous thing. And at the end, it's just yeah. like, and that's what Bitcoin is. <laughs> <laughs> That was one that I submitted to Arnie, who was the editor of that one, ready for him to be like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And, you know, God bless Arnie. Yeah. He's willing to take chances. He was like, yeah, record it. We'll put it in. Yeah. Well, the best one is that Garrett uh, had put that together. Garrett from Magic Tavern, who did some, like, editing stuff for Jack as well. And, and he was like, he put it together with a music bed. And I was like, you know, this needs a little extra push, I think. So I, I made, like, everything a sound effect. So I got to work on that as well, which is great. Like all those weird, like, uh, yes. A, and the deer also has cool sunglasses. Like, <laughs> like it's one of my favorite ones that are in there. And that's the best part is like just submit the audio and then you work your magic with it. So when I hear it, I'm like, oh my god, it's even it's a million times better <laughs> than the first random email of, hey, can we do this? Yeah. Do you leave as fast as possible? Starts to play Ride a Cowboy. Yeah, I mean, I no, I'd stay. <laughs> um, what other questions? I see. I'm I'm pretty sure we, as we were talking, we missed a few questions. So feel free to repost them. Do you stream this on Twitch? Yes, we're doing it right now. Check it out. Um, I think the first week I worked at what was then Jellyvision, I went to an improv show. It was like an improvised musical that you and Erica Elam were were in. And it was literally like one of those times, and I'd seen a ton of improv where I just sat there like this all day. I'm like, how are they doing this? <laughs> and I didn't really, I think I had maybe seen you in the office once, Tim, and then you had like come out and I was like, I think I work with that guy too. <laughs> but I, I, I remember was, you leaning forward in your chair, like <laughs> resting. I was like, who's that erudite woodsman? <laughs> <laughs> it was just that they made up an entire musical. Like, and everything was like saying like so well and just like it just felt like it was not made up, which is rare sometimes with improv. I just remember being like in awe of like the whole thing. So, right. Yeah. And yeah, I that was yeah. probably Baby Wants Candy. Maybe so, uh, yeah. Like a group that I was terrified to go in at first because they, when I was taking classes at I.O., they were like, you know, the Friday, Saturday night thing. So, boy, my first few shows with them were terrible. <laughs> um, but then, you know, it, that that show becomes so much fun. Because, yeah, when you're just, like, throwing yourself into it, mm -hmm. uh, when it goes well, I think it goes very well. Tim, I'm going to uh, add a challenge to this interview, which is say don't forget to answer the questions as well. The questions. Yes, because Tim is actually playing along as legend, <laughs> and I don't think has answered any question. <laughs> Oh my God, I didn't even know we were playing. <laughs> okay. Now, now let's get I'm... serious. Well, there was a point a minute ago where you said, good split. And I was like, I don't know what Ryan is talking about right now. <laughs> um, I'm looking more at my game screen now. No worries. Uh, next is. Uh, I like this unknown. question from the chat that just says, Tim. How's your day? Trip, you notice a sign for a <laughs> My day's going great. It's a really good day. I'm in Denver right now, and it's chilly. Mm. But you know, that's what you want out of Denver, sort of Christmassy. Yeah, I think that is what I want out of Denver. Is the air all different and hard to breathe there? Because it's the mountains. It, it is. Yeah. I, um, okay, wait. I have to do this. Uh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> uh, this person created... It is hard to split yeah. time between the game and the <laughs> It is, actually. To be fair. I know. Ryan, you've torpedoed this interview. I know. Well, <laughs> I, I guess I, I thought... I was paying attention before. I thought a legend could do it, but... <laughs> I can't tell... Oh, on the chat. Uh, does mayonnaise belong to Cookie? Here's one I yeah, I think we've established that uh, mayonnaise. mayonnaise lives in Cookie's... 
Mayonnaise is one of two cats that Cookie owns yeah. who are like the only people that he really interacts with when he's not doing the show. It's true, but it's unclear whether like the mayonnaise that hosts this game, is that the same mayonnaise or just is he named after Cookie's cat mayonnaise? I feel like there's a lot of lore in Split the Room we haven't explored. That's a, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I just realized you're gonna love this. This is hilarious considering I've I've worked for so long with this company. I've only been looking at my controller and not at the screen. I edit so I could only see the chat. <laughs> so questions have been coming up on my iPad and I'm like, this I'm not following I don't how have this the, game works. I, don't I guess have... I forgot how split the room works. <laughs> so I'm an idiot. After writing for it and doing the voiceover the entire game, you're like, what is this? I don't know how to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there, my little piece just shattered in the middle of the room. Well, uh, so in other words, you're saying uh, it won't be too hard to beat the legendary now, Tim Sniffen at this game. Late night I guess research. not. I know. You can be a legend for a lot of reasons, including <laughs> legendarily bad at a game you helped work on. <laughs> all right, um, sleep while enduring massive thunderstorms last that last all night. You volunteer? I mean, yeah, actually, I'd sleep better in a thunderstorm. I started to say, yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Can it just thunderstorm tonight? That you know, nice. I've tried um, I tried this for the first time the other night. I asked Alexa to play some storm sounds till mm. I go to sleep to. And they, she does it. It's nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Not really vital to the stream to yeah. tell, but still a pretty good story. So these are the type of things when we talk about stuff you can talk <sighs> about offline. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry, Warren. <laughs> um, I have one white noise thing where it's like a menu of like... 50 different things and you can create the most upsetting scenarios where it's like <laughs> a thunderstorm right alongside the ocean while you're stuck inside a dishwasher next to traffic. <laughs> Someone's breaking up outside. Right. <laughs> One of them is like street noise and another is like crowded room. Yeah. Which seems like the most horrible thing to go to yeah. sleep to. Yeah, I've definitely used those apps where it's like, oh, just in order to like make it more unpredictable, we'll just vary the sounds at random. And I'm like, I'm in a coffee shop that I think is on fire. <laughs> like, it's just starting. You're that dog that's saying, this is fine. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm always that dog. Someone asked what video conferencing tool we're using, and believe it or not, they said it's working really well, and it is, but it is. it's actually Skype. Yes. Oh, Much wow. to everyone's chagrin. Uh, yeah, Skype has actually been okay for this so far, but it requires like seven laptops hooked together with string. <laughs> yeah, as you there, there was an issue at the onset, let's not forget. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, the Jackbox chat is hot. They are talking video conferencing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your favorite game is uh, in Jackbox's long and storied history, Tim? Oh, my gosh. There will be two to choose from. Door number one is already provided. I think like the one that just, uh, it's one that I've had literally nothing to do with, but I feel like Drawful is just like, it's still as fun as it was the first time I played it, which yeah. is crazy. It's just evergreen. Yeah, I totally maybe agree. It helps, maybe it helps that I had nothing to do with it. Like it's cause I'm truly just like a person playing a game. You don't overthink, you know? you're not like criticizing as you play it. Right, whereas when I see like questions on this, I'm like, oh, I remember like we almost didn't put this one in. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 okay. Yeah, don't forget to answer. <laughs> Another person asking how your day is going. Everyone just wants you to have a good day today. I feel like these people are gaslighting me. One of these people is a murderer outside my house right now. <laughs> like, how are you now, Timothy? That yeah. would be the thing they whisper to me when they kill me is, how's your day, Tim? How's your day? Uh, getting another question from the chat. Have you checked on the children? Okay, I don't, it's a little weird, but. <laughs> oh, these crazy chat people. <laughs> Hello, Stod. Stod's in the Stod's chat. Here. Harry Fairy. Stod says, thank you for the lovely package, Brooke. No problem. <laughs> Tim, can you quickly glance out of your window? <laughs> I'm next to, I mean, the thing is, like, I have a window. <laughs> 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 this very prescient comment. 
What if you like move the camera to the window and then when you moved it back now there was a guy standing behind you? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Tim, if I not me specifically, but if I'm a young person watching oh. this chat and I want to get into comedy, do you still recommend moving to Chicago, taking classes, or moving to LA, taking classes, or is there a different route these days that's better? There's so many routes. I would say move where you want to work. Yeah. I wanted to, I really wanted to take Second City classes. It was such a big deal to me, and like I grew up on Saturday Night Live, and everyone I knew had studied there. So it was important to me. But also in Chicago, there, there's some TV work here now, but there's like Second City, there's the many theaters, and that's kind of the deal in Chicago. So if you like the prospect of that, and I will say, I think there's still no better improv training because mm -hmm. you just get so much training. You can do a million shows. There's always things going on where you can get on stage, which is often the best teacher. But if but don't move here if you're like, oh, I'm gonna like get my comedy education and then like immediately go somewhere else. Go to that other place. Yeah. Because so much of your, so many of your opportunities will come from who you know, and if you were in classes with people or just from being in the community. So go these days. I say go directly to the community that you want to be part of. If your dream is to work in LA. Go there now. There's plenty of classes you can take and shows you can do, and then also you're you're starting to be part of the world that you're going to work in. So but, I mean, I had a great time in Chicago. Don't be afraid to just go straight to Des Moines. And start making making contacts. <laughs> Des Moines needs to laugh as much as anyone, <laughs> and so go there. It's very true. I love Des Moines because I toured with Second City, and I remember there was a great bar that was just filled with animal heads. <laughs> so many, you know, and that's often that's how you remember the the place is like what you do after the show or before or where you stayed and. I remember looking around and being like, Des Moines, you're all right. <laughs> Were these heads on the wall or like strewn about the floor in a bloody pile? What do you think, Okay, Ryan? okay, okay. <laughs> uh, sir, you yeah, must have an animal head to get in these bars. Piled up on the floor. <laughs> like wade through them to get to the bar. <laughs> Just a good time. They're like peanut shells. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's one of those places you can throw your animal head on the floor. Hey, it's like peanut shells. <laughs> I'm blowing it at this game. <laughs> I honestly am as well. <laughs> oh, sitting in Nebraska and Iowa needs to laugh. Yes, both of them need to laugh. And one of them needs to count their voting results faster. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Political commentary. <laughs> Iowa's currency is animal heads. Very possible. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing people God. together. They're just sitting in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> First of all, I'm sorry for your loss sitting in Nebraska. A lot of people are just saying hello. Can um, I say hello back? Yeah. Someone asks uh, where the code is posted. Um, it's discord.gg slash jackbox games. Right. We post it in our discord However, group. You your yes, indeed. Uh, once the day, once the game has started, though, you can see it in one of the corners of the screen. In this case, the lower right. Mm -hmm. We have Tim I mean, think... every week. No, Tim is a special treat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe once a quarter, though. Okay, once a quarter. Who's here from Memphis? I mean, this is turning into a meat market. <laughs> I am endorsing it. <laughs> Frosty, oh, my profile yeah. picture on Twitch. Um, if people don't watch At Home with Amy Sedaris, oh. it's fantastic. I think it's the closest modern thing we have to Pee Wee's Playhouse, but also a fantastic thing in its own right. I think it's, it might be on True TV. I forget how I find it. I probably find it through Apple TV. It's sort of a, it's it's like a Martha Stewart show, but just gone so, so wrong. Yeah. And Amy Sedaris plays many of the characters on the show, including this like busybody next door named Patty Hogg. He's like this <laughs> Southern maven of her husband has like a seed empire, like those little packets of seeds you find in stores. That's how they made their <laughs> millions. But that's, uh, that's 
That's Amy Sedaris as Patty Hogg. That's brilliant. Yeah, she's the best. Yeah. I keep meaning to watch that show, <laughs> and I haven't gotten to. I need to like prioritize that because that's. Oh, I've heard I'll only good things. Amy, I'll tell Amy you in, you've intended to watch. <laughs> Why would show. you tell her either way? <laughs> I don't know. I'm creating. I'm sure that will keep her warm at night. <laughs> I did have a friend who had started a new podcast, and I was like, oh, um, your new podcast. I downloaded it. I haven't listened to it yet, but I downloaded it. And as I was walking away, I was like, what a useless thing to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I should have just Wait. not said anything. I went through the trouble of downloading it and then did nothing. <laughs> did nothing. <laughs> Random. Oh, job. and Lennon. Oh, it was a tie. Good. How about that? Well done. And oh, most likes Chucky It'll Red. Last. Let's see where our legend Tim Sniffen falls on the... Uh... Boy, am I regretting that player name. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, why don't we do a quick break for the Discord questions, some news, right. and keep the questions coming for Tim as we, uh, as we go here. Um, Just floated Tim over to his new oh. home. Oh. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, news. A lot okay. of news this week. A lot of news. Which Jackbox games do you like to play? I wonder if these were mislabeled. Did I seriously? <laughs> yeah. I was apologizing to uh, Ryan and Warren before I came I in. I think I got no, wait, Hold on. These are all right. Was it just the top one? Maybe. Was... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this so those just... are news. Wait, I didn't wait. No, these are, no, these are questions. No, these are questions, time. too. These are all questions, bro. <laughs> So wait, is Brooke writing those down and handing them to you? Brooke likes post-its. Yeah. And Stodd got us these great uh, shapes for the thing. Anyway, I guess we'll just do... Um, oh, wait, there's one piece of news here. No, wait, this is news. <laughs> news. News. Question. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Question. Question for Brooke. What's it like there. not knowing the difference between <laughs> questions and news? Uh, you oh, know, I, I, I walk through life in a very unique way. Uh, Frosty Paws points out, though, hey, if it ain't Brooke, don't fix it. And I think <laughs> they're right <Damn>. about that. <laughs> All right, here's the news. Uh, our complete PAX East and C2E2 schedule is up on our blog at mm. jackboxgames.com slash blog. So um, PAX East and C2E2 are both at the end of this month yep. in a week or two. Uh, we're going to be at both, and we're going to have some fun stuff to do at both places. Come see us if you're in Chicago or Boston. And if you're not, uh, a lot of that stuff is going to be streaming online. That's right. So watch us. Yeah, uh, typically it's like the PAX 2 channel, I yes. feel like. Yeah, maybe PAX 3, but typically PAX 2 for that. So Yeah, it varies from PAX to PAX. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to make of this news. Uh, this is news to me. <laughs> oh, boy. Right after this stream. Warren's been fired? <laughs> No, that's, I've been waiting. Yeah, it wouldn't be news. Uh, we are posting your requested fanfic story on our blog. What? Yeah, so <laughs> okay. uh, we took to our social media channels maybe like a week or two weeks ago mm -hmm. and said, if we're going to write a Valentine's Day love story with two Jackbox Games characters, who do you want it to be about? Okay. okay. And CJ wrote a story of say, how they met and fell in I love. I smell so. CJ all over this particular project. <laughs> and uh, everyone, uh, Twitter was very excited. <laughs> And we got a lot of requests right. for what we ended up with. So that is getting posted right <laughs> Wow. Well, I'm going to rush to read it just as, uh, as you folks at home will. Uh, so that's going to be on our blog, you said? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Draw okay. yourself a bath, uh, light some candles, <laughs> <laughs> and just dig on into that fanfic. Uh, we've received 1,000 messages today, according to Restream Chat. That's nice. Oh, Thanks, everybody, for sending messages yeah. to us. Okay, real quick. Last piece of news. TMP Fridays, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central. Ooh. So come along. That's an unhosted stream. Uh, we just show the game, and you can play along and enjoy yourselves. Mm, that's right. Uh, can I add one more uh, late-breaking news yes. item? Uh, next week on the Jack Lunchbox, uh, which is Wednesdays at noon Central time, uh, Owen and Ryan and Rydash are going to be on what? the stream with Ben uh, playing a game that we made during a Jackbox game jam. That's I'm right. Very excited. Pretty cool. For everyone to see it. So, Rydash, longtime uh, friend of the uh, of the company and longtime moderator of the chat, now working in a contract position for us, which is great. Uh, and we'll be here to play some some games. That'll yeah. be fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Shall we do some Tim questions? Yeah. Let's ask Tim some questions. These are from our Discord. You're on the spot, Tim. All right. And you... these won't be news items, right? <laughs> well, well, there's no guarantee. <laughs> yeah. Actually, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Uh, all right, Tim, you've done so much. Pearl Harbor bombed. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> How... <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> sorry. <laughs> we'll take that out, right? Too soon. Yeah, just cut yeah, that. Yeah. Too soon. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Let people find out in their own way. <laughs> sorry. I'll wait another seventy years. <laughs> Uh, but how do you stay motivated? What keeps you focused when things get tough? That's the question. Oh. life question. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's yeah, sort the, of a... the precursor to that was, uh, Tim, you do so much. You do so you're, much. Yeah. You're so well-rounded. How it's do you true. stay motivated? Mm -hmm. These days, especially, I feel like there's just so many different things to be inspiring. So if you feel like you're like burning out on one thing, uh, it's always good to like dive into something else, even if it's like, a completely random podcast on a topic that you've never heard of before or like that's what I try to do because I think the hardest thing of all is when you are trying to force yourself to continue to be excited about something that like you just need a little break from yeah to to just give yourself the liberty of like I don't know I mean don't judge me as I often will judge others <laughs> but like even like um for me it'll be like random nature documentaries or yeah. poetry Stuff that doesn't have to be hilarious, has nothing to do with, like, the main things I like in life. And as a result, that allows you to, like, you don't have to be good at liking it or suddenly be, like, a master of all poetry or nature documentaries. You can just go and watch them and kind of not worry about it. And then usually when you come back to that thing that's always excited you, you're like, oh, I love this. And now I remember why I like doing this because I gave myself a chance to – not care about it for a day or two or whatever. That makes that's a awesome. ton of sense. Yeah, because I feel like that's something I need to get better at because I will always like, if I'm working on a project and I'm not getting far in it, I always think uh, like, no, you don't, don't stray or you mm. won't finish it. So like I almost punish myself by working on it more and I'm not getting what I want done. Yeah. If you take a break and come back to it, it's always better. Um, so that's a great piece of advice. I just never start. So yeah, that's, that can be a also, thing for you. And I think like, uh, if you're trying to do something really well and you're starting to like go crazy, give yourself a moment to do the worst possible version of it. Like that's yeah, yeah, fun yeah. too. If you're like just going into a rabbit hole of like, you're working on something and you're just trying to like, you know, pet the bunny so hard that you're killing it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mixing my rabbit metaphors, <laughs> uh, but I think it's fun to be like, I'm going to write the worst essay in the world for the next hour. It's going to, it's just going to blow. I'm hearing the metaphor uh, police are outside your door. <laughs> Waiting to kill me. Yes. And as they do, they'll be like, how was your day, Tim? How's your day? <laughs> How is it now? <laughs> uh, next question. What is one of your earliest Jackbox or Jellyvision memories? We may have kind of covered this, but. Oh, well, I know. I mean, you know, you don't know Jack the, fir the First that came out a, a million years ago. I wasn't working on it right away because when we worked on it, it was in an incredible rush. We wanted to have it out for that holiday season and it was like august oh, or like it was it was very late in the year yeah and so i i worked on it more towards the end when it was just all hands on deck but in the beginning it was uh a programmer and also like allard leban who's the head of creative there at jackbox um but all so they were just working like around the clock it was they were they were never not tired they just were like crazed but i remember I didn't even know who he was. He was this bearded stranger from Chicago <laughs> who I later learned was Harry Gottlieb, like asleep in the hallway at Berkeley Systems because he did the host voiceover for the very first one. Right. Which was crazy because he was also like creative director. So he had to make all these different decisions and they would literally people would be in charge of like grabbing him and walking him to the voiceover booth <laughs> to say, if you if you don't record 200 more questions today, the game isn't going to have any questions in it. So, you know, he would <laughs> That's very hairy. Until three in the morning and then like find our hall and then find a hallway outside of where I worked. And I would walk past this like poor sleeping bearded person uh, <laughs> on my way to do something else. And like, that's how I knew that we were making this trivia game uh, that was going to be kind of obnoxious and no one had any idea if it was going to work. That's amazing. <laughs> if I know Harry, he, he went in there to record 200 prompts and instead re-recorded another 200 he'd already done with a different <laughs> take and then uh, didn't get the rest of them. Anyway, that's very Harry. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an early Jelly Vision, Jackbox, You Don't Know Jack memory. That's awesome. Uh, this is more of an existential question. Is the glass half full or half empty, Tim? Um, 
the glass is ready to be thrown at whoever comes into this room trying to kill me after asking how my day was. <laughs> You've been warned. Fair enough. Uh, when you're not doing work with Jackbox, what do you enjoy doing? Oh, well, uh, I worked. I, I came to Chicago both to continue working with, with Jackbox and also to work with Second City. I still write for them. Um doing uh, this and that, because a lot of their stuff is, you know, just improvised on stage, but some things they have writers for. So I work for them. And um, a group that I joined in Chicago, the Improvised Shakespeare Company, has an extended run of shows here in Denver. That's why I'm out in Denver right now. We're doing that through the end of March. So it's really cool. It was a theater that said, come out here. Like, we have housing for everyone. You know, we do a show once a night. It's a group of people that I love performing with. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's so cool. Yeah. That show is incredible. Yes. Yeah, I've seen the amazing. Chicago version, and it's awesome. Yeah. And if anyone is in Chicago or Denver, you should definitely go see it. There's one in L.A. too, and, right? Yes. There is one in L.A. at Largo they perform, and they often have various uh, other people that are not you know, regular cast members but have some Shakespearean training or maybe even just a tiny bit. But I think like Bradley Whitford, who is in mm. like Cabin in the Woods and The West oh, Wing, yeah. Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. And of course, um, every now and then, uh, Patrick Stewart of um, Star Trek's Picard, currently on CBS All Access. <laughs> I have no affiliation with that. I don't know why I'm plugging it. Um, <laughs> Hashtag ad. He has, I uh, know, I'm here, I'm here on the Jackbox stream to just tell everyone about CBS All Access. Uh, Let's take a quick uh, pause and talk a little bit about stamps.com. <laughs> No, but he uh, has performed with them because, yeah. of course, he's Shakespeare and trained, and it turns out he loves the challenge of improvising in the style of Shakespeare. I know that, like, the group is always thrilled when he has the time free to come and play with the group. That is so cool. <laughs> I, Patrick Stewart, uh, it seems like he's just a super nice guy. Like, he's just his game. That's so great. Yeah, it's like every new detail you find out, you're like, he oh, okay. He got better. It's like oh, he adopts rescue pit bulls. Right. Fine. <laughs> right. He's yes. Uh, we kind of covered this one already, but uh, which Jackbox games do you like to play? Which Jackbox games do I like to play? Yeah. I, yeah, I love Drawful in part because I had nothing to do with it, and so it's just like a fun game. I'll never get tired of Fibbage. Um, mm. Also, because I was around when we were working on the whole like phones as controllers screen thing. So it's so cool that, you know, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's still um, newer ones. I think Madverse City, again, another one I had nothing to do with is just so cool. And it was smart because the like, uh, you know, voice text to voice technology still sounds a little roboty. So they made it giant robots. Yeah. Yeah. That Brilliant. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree. Okay, what were the inspirations behind the art for Dictionarium? Ba, 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 ba. Oh, we wanted a very classical look. Since we knew it would be, you know, based on dictionary entries, um, I was looking at that kind of like uh, woodcut original illustrations that are kind of like a bunch of lines. So we wanted things that might look like they could be illustrations like in a dictionary page. And a lot of times words become kind of like a background texture since the whole thing is just like world of words. I think even world of words was maybe something you, Ryan, or someone said as like an early inspiration is it's almost like the whole thing happens inside a book. Right. That was our and, first sort of stab at. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's why we also have like the book comes out in the beginning and then it kind of flies forward and fills the whole screen as if the rest of the game happens inside of it. Yeah. We definitely got the note early on of like, don't go too literal with it. Don't make it like, and now we're going to turn the page, you know? And I think we wanted to do something that was evocative of, of that stuff, but not be literal with it, which you did an amazing job with. Yeah. And uh, as far as the little angels holding up the thing, it's always good to get a butt in there mm -hmm. you've got a little illustrated butt but in a very tasteful manner uh, that that's clearly got through the sensors that's the hand gesture for little illustrated butt just like <laughs> little illustrated butt i like imagining that as like a jira task like as a fan i can see an illustrated butt yep. in the game. Yep. <laughs> next game move it to results <laughs> 
Um, uh, someone's asking in the chat, a lot of improv background, do I prefer written and prepared humor or ooh. off the cuff? Yeah. I, I like both. I think when, when off the cuff goes well, there's nothing like it. Although it can't ever be recorded. I think like watching recorded improv shows is one of the greatest tortures. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're in the room and it's just going so well, you know, and I feel like I'm happy to say I have a handful of shows that just, they're just on fire. Like the audience is in a great place and every player in the show is in a great place. So that's a very special thing. Um, that's, that's one of my favorite things. But then like, you know, a really well-written essay uh, is a different skill. So I like that as well. What a terrible answer. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is if someone were to uh, improvise, say, a fantasy land and then record that as a podcast, that would be a terrible idea. No one should ever do anything like that. I'm just going to say, if you're going to do that, like really put the work in and do the world building and have a really careful arc that gets successfully executed over 300 episodes. I mean, you better land that fish, my friend. <laughs> That's the saying, all right. <laughs> uh, uh, what was the process like for developing the voice and personality of the Split the Room Cat? Oh, uh, I was working under the direction of uh, Missouri's own Spencer Ham. <laughs> <laughs> who said um, he wanted, you know, he, he said there's sort of a Twilight Zone feel for it, but I don't want it to be like a, a straight ahead impersonation of that. Yeah. So he said, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be as hilarious as, you know, say like Cookie. Yeah. Um, the, the mechanic of the game is more weird scenarios that you can't quite decide on. And I think we had maybe like three back and forths where I sent him kind of like a full on Rod Serling and then a few other things. And Spencer was great about just saying like, Hey, of the files you sent this one, I want you to do this. I think he had me speed up a little because it's interesting when it's meant to be like weird scenarios. I was very like, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, yeah, it's still a video game. So <laughs> no one cares about your like, nuanced intonations that much <laughs> so he always was like you know keep an eye on the clock but uh that was that was how we zeroed in on it and i know for me i often one of the files that like spencer the director of the game approved i would always keep that handy so that way before uh, recording a new bunch of questions or maybe if a few days had gone by i would listen to that again yeah to be like okay that's you know that's what we're going for that's so important i think to have like a key file like a key phrase or a key you know reference point kind of like a touchstone yeah as you like get farther away from it if you're if you're recording i think one of the things you added to that host which got a lot of talk uh through different games going on at the same time like listen to how tim is doing the little moments where it's like it would like read a scenario and be like here we go it's yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. boy just like those little uh lines thrown in just right like, I, feel, uh, I was working on patently stupid at the time and pascal was like we have to put some of that in there yeah 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 <laughs> it's like well it's already in another game yeah <laughs> it's like, unless we want to call tim in to do this one too yeah yeah it's like <laughs> you know you would do tim would do at least improvs of like you know like uh imagine you lose uh all your intelligence i know it's hard to believe like, yeah. you know, those little yeah. sides. <laughs> always classic and that was also spencer oh yeah who i did that a little bit and he was like that's great he said because you know his thing was we can always cut it out yeah um, yeah. mm -hmm. if you're tanking, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he was like, you know, and that's, that's the beauty of Jackbox as well, uh, is <laughs> it, it's always like, it's always like add more ideas. Like we always want, we always want more of what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. We can rein it back in if it's too much, yeah. which it yeah. never was. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, alter this question a little bit. Uh, which basically, is there anything that you haven't gotten to do in terms of a host character that you would like to do in a game? Oh, like a kind good, of character yeah, yeah. you'd like to play? Oh, the thing I think, this isn't really for me, but I think it would be cool if we had some sort of a panel or like several hosts working together. If it was maybe like some sort of like alien tribunal judging something, I think it would just be fun to have more interplay. Because yeah. currently we have a thing where it's like host and they comment on everything. I think it would be fun if you could have some sort of relationships develop between multiple hosts, almost like an evil morning show where different <laughs> people are talking back and forth. There might be something there. I think that would be fun to be a part of. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, and Take then, it. Take of, it. 
It's ours now. <laughs> We've kind of touched on some of this already, but like, which role at Jackbox has been your favorite? Like, of host, artist, writer, like what? And also, like, well, I don't know. What do you? What creatively do you find challenging about those? Like, hosting is so fun uh, because I think it's it's a little bit of like a marathon to keep it fresh and mm-hmm. interesting over you know what ends up being like. 700 800 questions i enjoyed the challenge like i loved working on split the room also because in that case like i wasn't an artist on that i think i did write some questions but it was fun to just like zero in and do that i think that was my favorite second to that only because it was kind of my my way into this world is question number segues will always be (laughs) dear to me and uh it was fun for the one we did in what did we say it was 2011 Mm mm-hmm um uh people might know this by now like there's alternate versions of many of them and so we got to put in like weird screwy little things so that was just a blast and also people would play the game and say like oh this is really fun and then i would get a message from them like a month later (laughs) i can think of uh andy carey who is a performer there in Chicago, he does Improvised Shakespeare Company. You can also find him on HBO's Barry. Oh. The plugs for things that have nothing to do with Jack Boss continue. <laughs> um, does he have a CBS All Access show? Yeah. <laughs> if he doesn't, he should, because there's so much <laughs> premium content on that channel. Right? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> no, but Andy was like a diehard player of, of that, you don't know, Jack, and many other games. But he would, when he realized there were alternate versions of the segue, he segues, he would go back and play and play and play until he would text me and be like, I just saw the chicken in question number three. <laughs> and I'd be like, you did it, Andy. You, <laughs> you it. finally did it, you crazy bastard. That's so awesome. Uh, yeah, I, that was really fun in uh, full stream, too, getting to build on that. We didn't have quite as much time to do them, but like a couple of the alts for like uh, question four that are building on the history built in 2011. Yeah. Uh, it's yes. so fun to do. I mean, that was right. Everyone was all about the question for storyline. Yeah. Uh, in 2011, so that was so much fun to do. Like question four, getting murdered and then mourned, and then <laughs> I think we suggested maybe they came back. There was a thing about like four showing up in a like a doorway. I forget if we ever even did that one, but like yeah, those were so much fun to work. Yeah, on. there was a lot of ideas we talked about. I think there was one where before full stream where he maybe comes back, but then full stream he was like, he's dead, but there's a stepfather for, yeah, which yeah. was hilarious. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. It was like surly young for yeah. not respecting <laughs> like fun new dad for. Right. <laughs> uh, well, cool. Well, we can keep talking and keep uh, getting questions from the chat, but let's start up another game. Yeah. And, uh, and this will be our final game of the, uh, of the stream. Uh, Tim, do you have any requests? Should we play Drawful? Since we just talked about it? Yes. Let's play Drawful. Mm-mm-mm. I'm totally gonna. Ha- oh, error. Okay, I go back to. And just refresh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is it the same room code? No, it'll be a different room code. But I believe Brooke will secretly oh, slip Tim, it to favorite you. Favorite line as split the room cat. Um, Brooke, we might need a chat refresh. When you oh wait, I, I was about to type my answer and then uh, lemon for lols as favorite line as the split the room cat. Honestly, early on. Um, just the super deadpan meow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was, it was, I think it was the way the game starts. It's like when you first hear the cat, it's just meow. Yeah. Um, it cracks me up. I, yeah. Deadpan meow. <laughs> meow with the cadence as though that was a common greeting. <laughs> meow, as you, as you know, meow. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> do, 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 do. Such great music in this game, too. Oh, should I? Do I have a room code? Not quite, but you will momentarily. Let's see. Oh. Sent. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, I can't be disturbed as I draw my <laughs> brilliant self-portrait. Hang on. There we go. Bah. Hello. 
So this is Drawful 2, a standalone game, which was not in a pack. This came out the same year as Party Pack 3? Three. 3. Is that right? Yeah. I remember because it was <clears> being worked on when I joined. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, and I might be, I think I'm an audience member, but that might be for the best considering how badly I did in the last game. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. No. I thought Tim got in. That's okay. If... It's it's for the best. <laughs> that way, uh, Tim can have an eye on chat for some more questions. All right. Uh, I'm going to click everybody's in. Is everybody's drawn? Uh, yeah, keep your questions coming in for Tim. Yes, now I can pay more attention to them <laughs> as Ryan and Warren shut me out of this game. <laughs> Tim, calm down. Don't knock everything over. Did you, did you hear that? Yeah. It's like, and it's like, <laughs> oh, Typical rage. Like slam poetry or haunted bread box. Draw a picture on your device that would have that title. And when you're done, hit send. You'll get points for each player that can Yeah, if you have questions that I so, missed, if you repost them now, I, I have literally nothing else to do on this chat. <laughs> I was invited to take part in. <laughs> Classic Tim. Uh... Question How do you get to be voice acting? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a tricky one. I mean, I know there's like voice casting agencies. That's often a good way to do it. These days, especially with podcasts, you know, that you can quickly make something and put it out there. That might be a good way to get a feel for recording for a mass audience. And then again, if you get some casting agency willing to take a chance on you, it's super helpful to say, here's this thing, go and listen to it. This is what I sound like. So that's my question for Johnny, da underline, underline, thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Thunder asks, how do I get started in voice acting? <laughs> Brooke, I'm sorry. We need Jesus. another chat refresh, I think. What? I'm thinking we're uh -oh. only seeing YouTube for some reason. Someone, uh, the underscore mess girl says, I'm a wonderful human being. Ryan. What? <laughs> All right, fine, I guess so. I want to see the reports. <laughs> Show me the raw oh, data. Right there. It's right there. The internet is forever. Oh, no. <laughs> do, 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 now, I see Lizard Jesus on this chat. Is this the same person that embroidered that quote for me from Twitter? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Is it? Oh, my gosh. I was in a fake fight with Kevin Serretta, voice of the captain in Joke Boat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just was joking. I mean, there's a there's a very poignant quote about World War II that I really had no business uh, referencing. But it was like, what's possible for the triumph? All that's possible for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. Yeah. And so I said, like, triumph of evil, parentheses, Kevin Serretta is for good people. Quote on uh, quote parentheses Tim Stiffen to do nothing, and then they uh, embroidered it onto a piece of um, uh, fabric. And uh, <laughs> hey, hold on, I'll, I'll go get it. Hang on. That's amazing. I love also that you brought it to Denver. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> Tim runs down the hall to get his. <laughs> I mean, I'm proud. It's my proudest like possession at this point. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> yes, lizard Jesus, uh, uh, lizard Gen Jesus hats off. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I love that you brought that with you to Denver. <laughs> it came here while we the whole thing happened. While oh, okay. We I thought you were like, okay, I'm traveling, so I need my toothbrush, no, my embroidery. Around with me, Ryan. <laughs> Although I would, Lizard Jesus. <laughs> I would. <laughs> this is a harsh one. Yeah, that's my only best guess. No, that's yours. Yay! It's not a huge deal, Brooke, if it's just broken. Unfortunately, restream chat is not super reliable. 
There, I said it. I wanted everything to go right for Tim, and nothing is going right today. This is the worst day of my life. Now. Yeah, how's your day going now, Tim? I know. I'm waiting for someone to murder me. Please, the door's unlocked. Come in. Please. <laughs> All right. Tim, Time do you have a times. prediction on the Academy Awards this weekend? We were talking about it earlier. <laughs> I finally saw Parasite just last week, and mm -hmm. I thought it was the coolest, weirdest, most original movie. So I, I mean, I'd be thrilled if that won Best Picture. Because if it's meant to be something that we just haven't seen before, yeah. Who boy is that parasite? <laughs> yeah. I just loved it. I was riveted. So I'm I'm rooting for that. It's hard to tell which way it's gonna go. Yeah. Uh, I I agree. I liked Parasite so much. That would probably be my choice out of their nominees. I haven't seen it yet. It's so, really good. Yeah. I was I'm not a Joker fan. I didn't like that movie. Here are your choices. It's my only other comment. Yeah, it um <laughs> It's also like I found Joker, you know, I was interested to see what they would do but like i found it really just like long like yes. every scene goes on for a long time oh, really and i just didn't think it was about much of anything at the end it was just like okay great like i don't really know what why you bothered to take my time to do this for me huh. but joaquin was fine in it yeah i thought i did enjoy his performance i'd be fine if he got an award for that but like for the movie overall eh. yeah i i agree a big eh. The big ant. <laughs> oh, Becca Paintmore. Hmm. Uh, says Tim, are you planning on doing more podcasts? Yeah, I love I love podcasts. Although hmm. none will be as dear to my heart or as um, <laughs> worthy of my uh, eternal disappointment as "Hello from the Magic Tavern." <laughs> <laughs> so well said. That's evidence here. <laughs> uh. Oh, oh cross wow. promotion. <laughs> I mean everything but Jackbox, folks. <laughs> Mission to Zixbra. Yeah, I don't know about that podcast, but I mean I've heard good uh, things. I'm not fickle. Yeah. So um yeah, let me know. Um uh, a small bit of cross promotion. If people want to hear more about behind the scenes stuff with Tim, we did a bunch of uh, interviews on the um, uh, Stitcher Premium stuff for Hello from the Magic Tavern. Nice, nice. So those behind the scenes episodes are up there. That's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here you're. And I haven't even because Ryan. Now we're totally off off topic. <laughs> like, you haven't you been doing things for Spin Tax? Oh yeah, so I did, this was really fun. Uh, I've been doing the like intros and outros for like most of the the premium stuff, where right. Craig is just on an intergalactic adventure that I'm just writing as I go. Uh, and that's been very, very fun to do. Let's see what um, I, mean, I have my own little pocket out of continuity to just be ridiculous in. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't heard any of those yet. So I literally don't know what Craig is up to. Uh, well, uh, it seems like you would easily be able to access that, but that's okay. Maybe you'll get to it eventually. I'm not, you know. Yeah, you know what? I've, I've downloaded it, um, <laughs> and it's just literally sitting on my hard huh. drive. Okay. <laughs> that's enough for me. I think, like, I've met you halfway. I've yeah, what else do I expect? <laughs> I listened to the sound of it downloading. <laughs> Does that count? Well, you do have a very loud 90s modem, so I guess it counts. It just goes... <laughs> <laughs> you hear it be, like, carved into the magnetic plate. <laughs> yeah. It's my own white noise. Enter your title. Beautiful. <laughs> this is a Uxie drawing if I've ever seen one. Is Uxie in? It looked like a Uxie drawing. Ooh, that's a good drawing, yeah. Do, 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 do. Oh, uh, I'm just scrolling back. Am I aware that Sour Patch Kids cereal exists? And do I have really? any thoughts? No! I did not know there was a Sour Patch Kids 
cereal. And here um, are your choices. So my thought is, they finally did it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll seek it out and give it a shot. It, I mean, is it horrible? That uh, sounds that? that sounds exciting to me, but it also sounds like it could be bad. M three T N three M three times I think wrote that. Have Have you had it? Is it horrible? I like Sour Patch Kids, so I, that's enticing. And you like cereal. But I've never thought this needs milk. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Oh, right. And here are your picks. Isn't milk? I feel like there's some points where milk is good for you, right? So Maybe. like if you've had some Sour Patch Kids and some poison, yes, <laughs> Sour Patch Kids cereal would be exactly what you wanted. See, it's built right in because Sour Patch Kids cereal is of course inherently poisonous, <laughs> just by its whole concept. Oh, see now Lemon for Lols is just finding out now about Sour Patch cereal. So we're, I mean, we're bringing people together. Yeah. From Nebraska, Des Moines, and Memphis. Memphis in the Mid-South area. <laughs> We're letting people know about new cereal brands, so... Doing a public service. Right, hey, we've promoted Jackbox not at all, so I think we've had a really good time. Uh, Ryan's gonna get mad at me for this, but Tim, someone asked earlier, is a fruit gusher a ravioli? <laughs> yes, of a sort. Wow, okay. you heard it Don't here. You because it's, I mean, there it's the same mechanic at work, which is like, you squish, you like bite into something, and it, it's filled with some sort of squishy. Yeah. This sounds horrible. <laughs> material. <laughs> it's a thing fruit. in a thing. It's a thing in a thing. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't disagree. I. Uh, I have stated that I'm tired with the internet's obsession with is a thing a thing like. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Oh, yeah. Is a boot really a shoe? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Just. <laughs> and uh, I am still in love with Ryan being <laughs> I know. Angry Ryan is my favorite Ryan. <laughs> Me too, Tim. We have this in common. That's true. I don't I don't let him out to stretch his legs enough. Angry Ryan. Raisin means is a great answer. <laughs> but is a hot dog a sandwich? Get in it! <laughs> Good job, Pookie Man. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I had I so thought I was gonna nail this drawing and I really didn't do that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the arrows back, I guess. Is yeah. It? Well Yeah. That was I was trying to be helpful. Shooting arrows at the sun in anger <laughs> is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Moon's gravitational pull. You have to show two different times. Uh, I see what you're <laughs> yeah. attempting to do there. Yeah, it's it didn't go over perfectly. I'm winning now. Nice, nice. Oh. No, I'm not winning. You're winning. <laughs> Damn it. That sounds right. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, okay. Tim, what art tips do you have for people? Mm. And I'm leaving that intentionally vague. <laughs> Um, one thing I know that, uh, I had an art instructor drill into me was get in the habit of finishing things. Yeah. It's really easy to give up on things. And especially like if you're doing stuff on your own, it's easy to get kind of caught in your own echo chamber of, no, this isn't good enough. I'll start over. But I think it's such a good habit to think, um, I'm going to take this and like, have it so that it can be a complete piece that I'd be happy to have put online or published or whatever. Uh, it's good to get away from that, you know, from like getting so judgmental that you throw things out. Cause often, you know, once you're doing it as part of like a job, you you have to finish things. Yeah. And like another good thing, sometimes I'll do this with either art or writing is you can put something down, but you have to start something else immediately in its place. Yeah. You can't just like be like, ah, I don't, I don't have the gift today. I can't do anything. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's a bad impulse to like give any oxygen to. Yep. So it's good to just like, even, and honestly, even those days where you hate it, I think those are the most important days to say, I'm not having a good time. This isn't like effortless and joyful, but I am going to finish this thing today because so often you'll get to the next day and be like, oh my God, I was so wound up or in a negative place for whatever reason. 
But now I have this finished thing. And yes. So many of the things you learn come from getting something all the way over the finish line. Because even then you can look back and be like, oh, this one part is weird, but like, I love how I did this one thing. And that's what you'll take to your next project. Yeah, and just feeling like you finished it and didn't abandon it is such a successful feeling, regardless of even liking it. Yeah, it's a good thing of like, you know, be be your first and like truest fan, even if that just means like, I think I'm allowed to keep doing this. And so I'm just gonna like push my way through this one thing. That gets you so much closer to those days where it is effortless. Yeah. I think those days happen because of the earlier days where you were like, my boy, I am going to drag myself to this like deadline or to this goal that I had for today. Like, um, yeah, it's it's so important for you to just like invest that in yourself. Yeah. It just, it, things get easier as you do that. That's really good advice. I need to take that advice more myself. Uh, it's very, very true. Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes, especially with writing, it's nice to have something done so you can go back and then rewriting is like such a fun process sometimes as opposed to oh, yeah. creation. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Right, where you're like, oh, I know how to fix this. I didn't know when I was writing. Yeah. Yeah, it's very true. Um, and an early uh, Jelly Vision art director, Mark Gibson, he worked, I think, a little bit on like, you don't know Jack sports. Um, his phrase was done is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's so true. <laughs> Someone's asking Frosty Paws asks, will Tim have the pleasure of looking through the Jackbox fan art with us? Where do I do that? I mean, I've seen it online when it gets posted, like, on Twitter and the Instagram and what was played before this broadcast. Are there other places? Yeah, we might show that video again as we leave. We're trying to do, we're trying to integrate the fan art a little more into the show, but you can always go to Twitter and go to the um, uh, Jackbox fan art hashtag, and all the new stuff will be there as it rolls in, which is really cool. Oh, great, great. Yeah, there was a thing of the Dictionarium host. I think there's been multiple things after Dictionarium was released that was awesome and bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, and there's been some really great TMP stuff there as well. Quick, type in anything. Yeah, I didn't work on that, so not interested. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and here are your choices. Big brain, bad guy trio. <laughs> the foolable oh. balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Neapolitan, vil oh, vanillin. Vanillin. <laughs> the bullies in the house. Uh, I really think we should mention that on that uh, bachelor pad drawing, somebody's title was Brooke getting a drink after work. That was my title. <laughs> oh, okay, great. That was really good. For myself. Great. Because <laughs> looking into my future. Yeah. Here are your picks. Oh, Becca Paintmore. Tim, do you do any other arts and crafts? Well, I mean, I started as a cartoonist in college, like uh, drawing and animation. So that's always been uh, where my my heart and my interest most is as far as art. Um, I At one point, I was hanging out with some Second City people and someone said, or I think I said, like, there should be a shirt with Gandalf looking kind of stern with the <laughs> caption saying, what you talking about? Oh, God. <laughs> um, so, which I did make into a shirt. Let me go see if I still have one, uh, my second prop for today's show. You, you bring everything Ooh. with you all the time. <laughs> I know. The next time you have to have me on, it's like, Tim's magical treasure box. Yep. <laughs> that sounds kind of adult and un unpleasant. Nope. Steve, we're committed to it. Uh, good job, Pookie Man. Good job. Well done, Mr. Pookie Man. Good job, Pookie. Oh, I lost by like 30 points. <laughs> yep. Well, oh, you should have been 30 points better. That's true. Don't forget to go to the gallery and tweet your favorite drawings out. <gasps> Tim appears! It was kind of fun to see you running at us. Like, yeah. Just <laughs> uh, so, um, I don't know if you can... It's, it's sort of faded at this point. Here, move, move it down, down a little. little. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's great. And then a little oh, to your hello. left. Yep, perfect. Yep, a little more. A <laughs> little more. That's great. Oh, it's perfect. Yes. Um, <laughs> there was about three months of time where you could buy these on Amazon. And then someone found it and they were like, yeah, that's copyright infringement. Right. Uh, right. 
They were like, you literally included the last name of the person you're ripping off in your thing. <laughs> there wasn't, it wasn't a lot of room for interpretation. <laughs> Uh, I know. I know. I was like, I got no argument. That was like, I did a thing I think two years ago, which was I figured out how to make like the chipmunk voices, yeah. uh, you know, using sound stuff. So it was really easy to re-edit the chipmunk Christmas song. Uh, you know, the like, the uh, time of year I still wanna hula hoop yeah, that yeah. song. Hmm. But I had it stop where Dave yells at them because there's a thing where Alvin's late to the recording and he's like, Alvin, Alvin, Alvin. And then at that point, they're like, whoa, whoa, you can't talk to us like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have heard that, actually. That's hilarious. And at the bottom, you know, full of hubris and therefore deserving to be taken down, I, I put, like, song used without permission. Come and get me. <laughs> and, and they did. They did. And they did. <laughs> they took you up on that. Yeah, I got an email from YouTube that was like, yeah, the owners of this song have said, you have no right to use this. <laughs> and I was like, fair, fair. <laughs> How did they figure it out? How did they find me? I did everything right. That's awesome. Um, well, cool. I yeah. feel like that's... Uh, do we have anything else planned, Brooke, or are we ending it there? Nope, that's, that's it. it. Okay. Um, we're continuing to experiment with the fan art stuff. Where, uh, we've got some really cool ways that that's being integrated into like the pre-show and the bumper and stuff. Uh, so, But we, that's not the only thing we'll end up doing, but we'll figure it out. So for the folks asking about that, um, but other than that, we'll play TMP tomorrow, yep. unhosted, mm -hmm. and then we'll see you guys again uh, next Wednesday and Thursday for some more fun at the Jackbox That's house great. time. Well, thanks for coming by, Tim. Thanks so much, Tim. Um, I have a few other uh, streaming services that I would love to talk about. <laughs> Just do some really exciting shows, and um, do we have any time left for that? Okay, we know about your CISO show and your Crackle show. <laughs> You know, she's an <laughs> unsung hero of the streaming world. It's not getting enough uh, quality buzz. Is there like a quick, a tight 45 minutes to just walk through like the CISO lineup? Where did I think you... what people are asking for. Where did you get this PowerPoint from the CISO management team? That's a great question. It's hard not to make one considering how much quality oh, content they no. generate. Go to the next slide. <laughs> Uh, Tim, is there anything you do want to plug before we end? Uh, you're doing a Shakespeare in Colorado, Denver. Yeah, I mean, if you're near Denver, um, it is. It's a it's a beautiful theater. Like the group that's here, it's really fun. So if you're anywhere nearby, we're here through March 22nd. Um, and then the other thing is, I know a Chicago friend of mine, uh, Abby McEnany, has a show on Showtime. Yeah, it's kind of like a miracle story of how she did a live Chicago show. And then um, Lily Wachowski, who was one of the original creators of The Matrix, took an interest in it. It went to Sundance. It got picked up by Showtime. So they just finished their first season. But uh, if you have a Showtime subscription or I think you can do like a free trial, uh, all eight episodes of the first season are online. And I did a little bit of contributing writing for that show. And I mean, regardless of my involvement, uh, it's a, a cool show given to someone that was like, homegrown Chicago talent. So I'll plug work in progress. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's great. Show. yeah, everyone should absolutely check that out. <laughs> Not right. available on, CB on CBS Plus uh, or <laughs> CISO, but someday, someday. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, okay, well, anyway, uh, thanks, everybody, and we will see you guys yeah. next week for some more Jackbox shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, All right. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>